Babaji Day. What does that mean? You know, in the morning, many people will understand also. That's the blessing of Babaji to some people. Every year, we celebrate that great yogi. For some people, they have never heard of him. For some people, they recently heard of him. A yogi function completely different. Somebody asked me once, you know, Babaji, is he Vaishnava? Or is he Saivite? Is he Advaitist? Is he Dvaita uh, Dvaita? What is he? You know, this is very often in the mind of people. You know? Because you see, a yogi, when we, when we have a, a certain things, when we talk about a yogi, I think that, yes, is somebody which is? Which is? Eh? Beyond? Sorry, say? Beyond duality. No. So, a yogi, like uh, Lord Krishna said in chapter 6, you know, verse 45, no? 46, no. he said to Arjun, a yogi is greater than an ascetic. Greater than a man of knowledge. Greater than a man of work. Karma yoga. They urge Arjun, so become a yogi. So in which state is a yogi? You would take Mahatma Babaji. He exists. He was before all Sampradaya was created. Before Saibai or Vaishnavas existed. He was there. Probably he himself inspired some of the great Acharya to create. Because you see, more the mind of man become attached to the mundane reality, more you need certain discipline. But a yogi is beyond that. That's why Krishna is saying, don't become an ascetic. Because behind an ascetic, there is a lot of expectation. An ascetic does all his ascetism <coughs> to control himself. So constantly, he has to watch himself. He has to be always alert. And also there is this expectation, in case if I don't be alert, I may fall. A man of knowledge, somebody which died themselves in search of knowledge, they died themselves in books. They understand only a certain limitation of things. So with the knowledge, what happened? The ego also rise. Because when the ego rise, we start to compare ourselves. I'm better than you, because I know best. A man of work is also again full of expectation, because nobody will do something without expecting in return something. Arjun, don't be like this. Become beyond that. Which means, with faith and love, dedicate to me. With faith and love. Yeah, Bhagavan Krishna doesn't think only on the aspect of Krishna. He said, me which is seated within you. Rediscover who you are truly. And what you have inside of you is beyond that old drama which you have created in your mind. Will all the drama that you have created in your mind limit you? A yogi is beyond that drama. 
what Mahabharata Babaji has seen in his life, you know, for all these centuries, for all the great stages, because how is he? He's silent. He's quiet. He's the inner observer of things. So it's not that you have to be in there, you have to rush to the Himalayas to see him. But in the inner core of your heart, in the silence of your heart, there you find him. But you don't find him as you expected. You know, very often people will think, oh yeah, you know, I will see a big yogi or whatever. No, you will not find him like that. You will find him as the personification of the self. That's why Krishna said, no? The yogi perceived me in everything. Will the yogi have gone beyond the duality? When you look at things, you are stuck to that. No? When you understand something, you are stuck to that. Your understanding or your seeing is limited. It's not just saying that, okay, you know, he's a great yogi, we should sit and meditate, you know, like him. No. He's a reminder of who you are. That's why Krishna when he reminds Arjun, you become a yogi, you know, be a yogi. He didn't say to Arjun only, he said to each individual person, I am inside of you. I am seated inside. Why are you looking for me outside? Look for me inside. If you look for me outside, you will be disappointed. Then outside you will find only the limitation. But out of his grace, because he knows very well that our mind is very flickering, no, he has taken an aspect so that we can concentrate upon him. We can serve him. But once that aspect has interiorized within oneself, then you see him inside. You carry him all the time with you, at all places. The saint doesn't see or perceive the way people see. No. People will come and go in your life, but the same stay always the same. Once, who tells the story of Kabir crying? No? So they ask him, "Who hurt you?" No, 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 no. Kabir said, "So and so passed away." Ah, so they said, that's good. He passed away. He said, no, no, it's not good. Because he was my benefactor. Whatever he was doing, he was a bad person, yes. But in reality, he was constantly thinking of me. So, you see, we see things in a very limited way. As long as we see things in that limitation, you will gain only limitation. When you transcend that limitation, then you will perceive Krishna in everybody, in everything. Wherever you are, He is not only one sitting in the temple, but He is sitting in the temple of your heart. And this is the place where the yogi dwell, you know, where the state of being a yogi, where you perceived, when you close your eyes, the first thing you see is him. You don't see you. Because what would you see of you? Who are you? Which life? You know, because when you talk about you, you are talking about you now, no? But you have many you. <laughs> Who 
thousands and millions of lives, which one will call you call yourself? You. But there is this identity of the Atma, which is part of him. That's why you don't perceive you, you perceive only him. So yogi is always absorbed into that. The mind is always absorbed into that. The heart is always absorbed into that. Then you become a yogi. So, Bhansa Babaji have asked me even today to teach the third Kriya. So I will start today itself. Because Kriya, the third one is have to be given one to one. So I can't just do it in masses. <coughs>